We discovered Max was sick with brain cancer quite suddenly. Uh, it happened almost overnight. He was 10 years old. It was in July, late July of 2014. He was uh, a healthy, to our mind, happy, everyday 10-year-old boy playing rugby on weekends. And suddenly, that winter, he got sick. So within a space of literally two weeks, we had gone from thinking our beautiful 10-year-old son had some strange virus to discussing life-saving surgery with neurosurgeons. Max ultimately went under one surgery. Um, it was an eight hour procedure. They were able to debulk the main tumour in the midbrain, remove entirely one tumour from the left side, but none of the others. What we really need are new models to attack this disease. Traditionally, we use models where we look at the tumour at end stage or our drug treatment after it's happened. But what we really need to launch this first phase is to develop models where we can watch this tumour live as it's growing, as it's being treated by the drug, um, to really discover that part of that biology that we're missing and that we really need to target. What's really unique about this research uh, program is the interdisciplinary approach that we're taking to answer a particular problem. We're taking three completely different scientists um, from different fields together with their extended network to answer this question um, in ways that as a preclinical scientist in brain tumour biology, I on my own would not look at. So at the moment in the tumour space, most people traditionally research tumour biology in the context of mouse models. These have an end point and a start point. We don't get to see the biology in between. Another limitation of mouse models is that we can't actually see the tumour evolve or how it's responding to therapy and how resistance might be occurring. So we're going to use the zebrafish as a model system to study this human disease. And what's quite remarkable about the zebrafish and what many people don't know is that actually the genome of the fish is 70% identical to uh, the genome of humans. And also proteins that lead to disease uh, in humans are often 80% uh, of those are conserved in the zebrafish as well. So I believe it's a great model to study uh, human disease and in the context of brain tumors, we're gonna also make use of its power of live imaging. So since the zebrafish uh, embryos are transparent, we can use these to now uh, image the tumors live as they are growing and also make use of the vascular transgenics that we have in my lab to then visualize the tumour in context of the vasculature and assess uh, the function of that vasculature. So can we use this in these different tumour types to deliver drugs uh, more effectively? If, if there could be another treatment other than chemotherapy, there are no words to describe how important that is and, and what a difference that would have made to Max. Um, Max underwent 12 months of chemotherapy um, and watching a child go through that um, is, is something that no one, no child should have to bear. What we need for this program to really get up and running is some funding to really launch that first phase. Without this, um, we're not going to be able to convert this great idea into a research program. Currently these kinds of projects that we're trying to start and these models aren't funded through traditional funding bodies. So we really need a visionary philanthropist or funding body to really help us convert this great idea into an actual research program. When we all got together, there's many uh, aspects to the, this disease that have never really been studied in detail. And really we can now start to reveal some of these aspects. I feel like at the moment, um, the outcomes are really unacceptable and I, I would like that if a child was ever diagnosed with a brain tumour there was more options available than what there is today because to me as a parent and as a researcher um, it's just un an unacceptable outcome.